So I'm going to speculate why Rudy Chan from Alpha Investments is so mad. Now, first of all, you have to know that in Rudy's anniversary, 6.9 was cost $699. Most of the things he gave were MetaZoo promo cards. So Rudy Chan has a stake, no matter what you want to call the stake, you can, maybe it's equity, maybe it's not. I mean, again, the honesty, transparency is simply not there. What is the understanding between Rudy Chan and MetaZoo? I don't think it will ever be clarified. You know, MetaZoo is never going to say it and Rudy will never say it. It's a sponsorship, essentially. Almost like the established titles going along, you don't actually know. Most of the YouTube content creators are not going to tell you what the you know, sponsor. They're basically a sponsor of Rudy's channel. They pay Rudy in cash, I assume. I hope so, for Rudy's sake. They pay him in playmats with his face on it. They pay him in promo cards that then he can sell in his uh, mystery repacks. Uh, Flesh and Blood, same thing. They give him some dice that he can use. They obviously are licensing, giving him the IP. So he's either getting a license to make the dice or they're just sending him the dice. They give him $1,000 Rudy promos they can sell for $1,000. If they don't sell, he'll just light them on fire in front of you because that's the way to sell a pro product. Um, Rudy is incentivized to kill magic. I hate to tell you this. Yes, on one hand, Rudy has a very big magic collection, but on the other hand, he has inns with flesh and blood, which definitely benefits. If you ask any, if you watch any flesh and blood YouTube channel, which is, they're not big channels, but they try, they try. You know, I argue with them sometimes and it's like, okay, cool. So what channel is bigger than mine? Not Alpha, again, Alpha Investments will consider a magic channel and Tolarian Community College is giving his name, Tolarian Community College, right? Tolarian Academy is probably not a flesh and blood channel. So my point is very simple. It's like, okay, cool. You guys have content creators. They're pumping the brand. They're never going to get as big as magic content creators, no matter how hard they try it's just simply not like they have this fabled hunter guy who does very interesting content and the only views he gets is from magic cards like when he sold his black lotus to buy some flesh and blood like he's got to weave magic into the, the the keywords if you will so if magic dies and flesh and blood goes to the moon who will benefit ah uh, the rudy chan will benefit now Rudy does not have many good things to say about Wizard of the Coast, and it absolutely benefits him for to see it burn. I do not want, uh, I'm kind of conflicted. On one hand, Wizard of the Coast has treated me very poorly to the point I had to threaten to sue them to get my name taken off of a ban list, which showed them my location. It showed them the actual store I play Magic at every Friday. I was like, okay, that's definitely illegal as hell. And again, they took away the ban list, which had everybody's full name, real names, real DCI numbers. The DCI number then registers, it shows the store and the store address and last time you visited and last time your card was scanned, right? So as long as you had the DCI number, you could pump, punch in somebody's DCI number and figure out where they are geolocated or where they normally play, how often they play. Do they play only pre-releases? They go every F and M and so on. So from that information, you could find out that DNA Comics was my local game store and I went there pretty much every week. And like, you know, Gen Con, you can then punch the Jeremy Hambly in the face, right? So there could have been the chance for violence, which I told them, hey, this is very bad. Uh, and this is illegal as hell for you to make a list of people you do not like and then expose their full name, where they are located, essentially in Uber docs, right? Essentially a docs, if you will. They were basically doxing everyone who they felt were politically right leaning, which is what I told them. This is, going, you know, I'm going to sue you for millions. And then they took off the list, of, you know, blah blah blah. They wrote me that email back saying, "Oh, we're not going to pursue legal action." I was like, "What the hell? No, I was going to pursue." Do you not stand my email? Anyway, I have all that documented. I've shown that on many many different things. Happy to show them again, show it again as proof because a lot of you guys don't believe it probably. Very interesting interaction. So on one hand, I do want to see magic burn, especially the people in magic, uh, in magic management. Aaron, Mero, you know, you could list them all. I mean, there's so many of them. On the other hand, uh, if the game does have get new, so this is one, I will support magic fully with its new team, but you gotta lay off everybody. Like I, I do not want to see one person left. 
then I will be supportive. So on one hand, I incentivize for the game to survive, but I just hate the people running the game. So if somehow you were able to remove the problem I have with Mero, Aaron, you know, uh, all the other individuals, which, you know, again, you know, there's so many of them that have done really, really bad things for the game. Cancel Teresa Nielsen being one of them. Cancel me, cancel Tiwoo, cancel Magic for Good, cancel Jeremy Ham. I could go on and on, right? But it just sounds like the same tape over and over again, but this is what happened. So I'm in a different position than Rudy Chan is. Rudy Chan, if Magic goes down, he's good. He's got flesh and blood. To my knowledge, Flesh and Blood, I think it's very similar to Magic. My understanding is that if Magic loses, Flesh and Blood wins. And that Flesh and Blood is always actively trying to take away Magic players from Magic itself. It's almost like uh, a, com I think it's a direct competitor. Now, MetaZoo, people compare it to Pokemon. I don't know how much MetaZoo would benefit if Magic went down. Of course, you know, there would the, the vo card volume space the market space, I mean, yeah, you could move into position. You can take eat market cap. So I am a little skeptical of Rudy Chan. Yes, he does have a lot of magic. The exact amount is really unknown, but we're assuming that it is a lot of magic, a lot of sealed, a lot of singles, a lot of old cards. We assume that because we see the collections he buys, we see the boxes and he, it's kind of made for you to believe that he owns a lot of cards, which may honestly be true, um, because every video is in a different corner of his, you know, box palace. But we also know that he has ends with Flesh and Blood, where he does not have ends with Wizard of the Coast. In fact, Wizard of the Coast probably doesn't like him very much, right? And he'll never have his own Post Malone card in Magic, but he already has multiple cards in Flesh and Blood in Meta Zoo. So. If Magic were to go to zero, would he benefit from it? I think so. Would I benefit from it? No. I'm never going to play Flesh and Blood. I would never play Meta Zoo. I will play Pokemon. So you could say, oh, Pokemon can eat some of the market shares and probably will. But it's not the direct. I, if my understanding is correct, Flesh and Blood is the direct competitor of Magic the Gathering. And if Magic the Gathering were to die today, completely just get wiped out, Flesh and Blood would be the main beneficiary and they would be able to eat a lot of the player base. That's my understanding of how it is viewed among the Flesh and Blood YouTube channels and the very small amount of Flesh and Blood players that they can run tournaments, they can do things, and they basically will replace Magic the Gathering. Do I think it would happen? No. Um, Magic is... For whatever you think it is, it is big. It is like kind of this concept of too big to fail, and that's why they've been running it like a 2008 banking <laughs> bank. It's too big to fail. These dumbasses will clear, I'll always buy our product, and they're they're right. You don't need that many dumbasses to buy a thousand dollar booster pack, right, for it to be successful because it's a thousand dollar booster pack. You know, you're already making a thousand dollars per dumbass per pack for box. Just be very careful, you know, be very, very careful where people's alliances lie. Um, if you know somebody is, you know, very close to the uh, flesh and blood, uh, very close to flesh and blood, had multiple pictures of him on play mats and promo cards that he sells for a thousand dollars. And this supposedly, and if you ask any flesh and blood content creator, their main enemy is magic, right? If only magic were to die one day, yeah, I could see Rudy Chan benefiting long term, right? Because he has a relationship with a game that will, quote, replace magic. It's interesting. You always have to look at it, right? You always have to look at the scenario. Would I, do I want magic to die? No. Do I want magic to kick out Aaron and Marrow? Yes. I've specifically said these two names because I feel like they're the two biggest problems in Magic the Gathering today. Brian Kibler plays Hearthstone. So like I would put Brian Kibler in there, but he's already out. He made his one video, he got his bag, and he just zed it out. <laughs> Hi guys.